Bago dumating yung mahal na birhen, ang mga angels ang dumarating muna. Yung parang, uh, para bang nag, ano siya, nagsashanting sila na ang sabi, naririto na ang mahal na ina. Ganon ang, ang parang kanta ng mga angels. So, uh, nakita ko yung mga liwanag na they're all around uh, the, sa in front of me. Tapos na doon sa gitna, lumitaw yung liwanag doon sa gitna. Nagkaroon ng form doon sa liwanag na yon doon sa gitna na yon Tapos naging mahal na birhen. And uh, she, she, she was, she's wearing the uh, golden golden sash and then golden mantle. Yung, yung belo niya, gold. Kaya ang salita niya, siya ang ating mahal na ina. I am the mother of love, peace, and joy. The message to the Filipino people, I, I found it also very powerful. Parang, parang it was very, very specific for us. And, and uh, if I understood it well, that, that we are, as a people, uh, Emma was saying that, that people were called to be saints, but in the Philippines, the whole nation is called to, to, to sainthood, to sanctity. has been chosen to, so many popes have already spoken about that, to be the light for Asia, you know, something like that. And um, it makes sense with all the sufferings we're having. It makes sense. With all the purifications we're having, we're not succumbing to, I don't know, too much materialism. There is so much faith in our people and very, very simple faith. So it, it makes sense to me. At ang lupang Pilipinas ang pinili niya sapagkat ang sinabi niya sa akin, ang gift na ipinagkaloob niya sa atin na kailanman ay hindi mawawala at iyon ay maibibigay natin sa ating kapwa ay ang gift of faith. Ginawa po tayong instrumento upang ihatin natin ang kanyang pagmamahal, kapayapaan at kaligayahan. This is not new to me. And even I did not hear that from visionaries or from those who claim they're close to our Holy Mother. I heard this only from ordinary people, even outside the Philippines. I said, you know, you Filipino people, you're the missionaries of the third millennium. You know God has special love for you. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, you are here because you feel the love of God and we receive the healing through the Eucharist that we receive today at the Holy Mass. Oh, Pieta has a few websites and some of the followers have published books on the messages and their experiences. By and large, however, Emma and her followers managed for almost 12 years to go about their missions without attracting too much attention. But after the 2004 apparition in the Philippines, events escalated and in December 2006, Action News 3 in upstate New York aired a two-part feature. 
After seeing some of Emma's reported miracles, we decided to dig a little deeper. In order to do that, we sought out the help of the Catholic Church, local professors, and SUNY ESF scientists. Emma de Guzman is not the first person to say she has experienced such miracles as the stigmata or even bilocation and levitation. But she um, had the wounds from the crown of thorns. Sparkles and, uh, were descending upon everybody. They were the all crown, over Emma, the her face, hands, the feet, something. the side we've seen come, the back. Many people we've spoken to while so investigating this story have given similar testimonials, including several Catholic bishops and even cardinals. While they said they couldn't speak for the Catholic Church, they personally believe in Emma's gift. The specimen has to be metallic or something that conducts electricity. After hearing so many testimonials, we decided to look for hard proof of Emma's gift. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Emma and her followers tell us these sparkles you see on her face appear from nowhere and symbolize the presence of Mary, the mother of God. So we decided to do some research. We were able to find studies that report the sprinkles' appearance as early as 1917, and it's referred to as escarchus, the Spanish word for frost. We also found results from scientific studies that compare religious escarchus to industrial glitter. To determine if Emma's sparkles are escarchus or store-bought glitter, we took a sample of the sparkles given to us by Emma, as well as a jar of store-bought glitter, to SUNY ESF. All right, so that goes in there like that to be analyzed under an electron microscope. Size and shape of the ones that you brought on the card are the same as the ones that you got in the store. Uh, they had the same chemical signature, very rich in chlorine. You saw how fast that chlorine peak was, was growing up. Next, we subjected Emma's sparkles and the glitter to a battery of chemical tests. Many of our results didn't match those of previous studies. But after exposing both to hydrofluoric acid, we discovered the chemical composition of the glitter changed, while Emma's sparkles remain the same. This mimics previous test results of real divine escarchus. Another key characteristic of real escarchus is it contains fungi and algae, which presented a problem. Because we can't see the organic composition in this instrument. So if they were of a different composition or something unknown to us, uh, I wouldn't be able to tell that. Johnson's final conclusion is Emma's sparkles are not industrial glitter, but we are waiting for further test results. We fell short of scientifically proving or disproving Emma's gift, but as Connie Meany tells us, that doesn't mean it's not real. Whether Emma's gift is ever substantiated or not, she continues to have thousands of followers around the world who believe she will one day be canonized as a saint, and many of them are following her back to their Salvation Mountain in the Philippines next week. I'm Jared Worksman reporting for Action News 3. I am convinced also that uh, we have been gifted by the Lord so much, especially the gift of faith. No? And uh, I think uh, uh, we have something to do. And the Lord is here in order to achieve many things in our area. Uh, that, that means the fact that we are the only predominantly Catholic nation in, the, in Asia is not an accident. No? Kung ano ang pinangako ng aking anak para sa inyong lupa ay mangyayari. Kung ano yung sinabi niya na ang na-destroy dito ay muli niyang ibabalik, muli niyang ibabalik. Ako ang inyong ina na nagmamahal sa inyo. Ako ang ina ng, pag, ng kapayapaan at kaligayahan. Sapagkat tayo, kayong mga anak ko, ay dadaling ko sa kaharian ng aking anak. Yun, sabi niya. At mahal na mahal niya tayo. So how did this all begin? Is it possible that an ordinary OFW, an overseas Filipino worker, could be a chosen one of God? This visionary of the mountain of salvation still describes herself as just a nanny housekeeper. Yet, she has had an impact on so many lives. It changed my life uh, completely uh, because I was not going to church for a good few years and I thought I was okay. I didn't need to go f and have a confession because I thought I was okay. But when I saw Emma, I knew I was in darkness. I thought I was in the light, but I was in the darkness. Since Emma came to our house, we go to the church every day, every day. 
It's amazing. From so many years, I don't go to the church. Now I have to go to the church every day, every day. Her eyes met mine, and her, she went way down inside me. I, I just couldn't believe it. It was a feeling that she knew everything about me. Emma really amazes me, really. I mean, um, the messenger is uh, very powerful to me. Her simplicity, her humility, her ordinariness makes her so extraordinary. Yeah, that is, I, I, I feel very much drawn to her. Widowed at the age of 25, Emma tried but couldn't find a job that would help her support and educate her three children. There was a demand for domestic helpers abroad, so she applied and received an offer to work as a maid in Singapore. I took that uh, kind of job because I really want to, uh, to work and uh, support my children. So for two years, Emma worked as a maid. But overseas employment did not give her the financial security she expected. She soon discovered that the Fly Now Pay Later plan, which the agency had advanced and their placement fee, would leave her with virtually nothing. My salary was 250 in the year 1984. Mm. So my salary was $250, Singapore. The $200 goes to the uh, agency and $50 from my, uh, to my pocket. So that $50 I give to my children. Only to, uh, that $50, that's why uh, that 50 is not enough uh, for my uh, children because they are studying. When her contract was about to expire, Emma began to panic. I don't want to go home because I have no money. And my children, they're asking for all these uh, things that I want to bring. And I said, Nako, Diyos ko, sabi ko, paano kayang gagawin ko? Uh, how could I uh, bring, any, uh, bring those uh, uh, things that they wanted me to buy? So I said, I don't want to go home. So I was talking to my friend. And she asked me, all of a sudden, she asked me this, uh, do you know uh, Canada, Emma? And I, this Canada, oh, it's a country, and they're looking for a for nanny housekeeper. So that time I didn't even know what is nanny. All I know, domestic maid. So I said, oh, I want to work. So on her day off, which she enjoyed once a month, Emma went to the church and sat in her favorite spot. 